The story begins with Carola and Stefan, a couple deeply in love, enjoying their final day of vacation on a beautiful beach in Kenya, Africa. Stefan suggests they visit a town called Mombasa, and although Carola would rather stay on the beach, she eventually agrees. As they board a ferry, Carola's eyes meet a striking Maasai warrior, a member of a local tribe, and an instant attraction sparks within her. Upon arriving in Mombasa, Stefan heads off to make an unusual purchase, while the couple gets lured into a shady situation by a dubious character in an alley. Soon enough, they realize they're in grave danger as two more thugs join in. Miraculously, the Maasai warrior reappears, and his mere presence terrifies the thugs away. Grateful for his help, Carola and Stefan are safely escorted back to the ferry by the Maasai warriors. However, upon returning to the city, they miss their bus to the hotel, and the kind Maasai warriors come to their rescue again, offering them a ride. Carola wants to express her gratitude by inviting the warriors for a drink, but Stefan objects, preferring to spend their last day together. A determined Carola goes to the bar alone, where she and the Maasai warrior, Lamalian, share a dance and a growing connection. In a twist of fate, Stefan catches them together and loses his temper. Carola intervenes, preventing a brawl, and says farewell to Lamalian. The next morning at the airport, Carola has a change of heart and decides not to return with Stefan. An argument ensues between the couple, with Carola revealing her desire to explore the rich Maasai culture further. Frustrated, Stefan leaves alone, and Carola embarks on a journey to find Lamalian. At the bar, she learns from other Maasai warriors that Lamalian has returned to his village. Determined to follow her heart, Carola makes her way to the village. During a pit stop on her journey, she encounters Elizabeth, another foreigner who settled in Kenya after a similar romantic encounter. Elizabeth cautions Carola about the challenging living conditions in Lamalian's village, but Carola remains resolute in her pursuit. Despite Elizabeth's advice, Carola continues her quest, but Elizabeth informs her that she must wait for Lamalian to extend an invitation to the village. With no other option, Carola stays at Elizabeth's home, patiently awaiting Lamalian's return. After 10 long days, Lamalian finally appears, and an intense connection instantly ignites between them. Carola begins her journey to the village in question. There, Lamalian introduces Carola to his village, where she meets his family and receives a tour of his snug bachelor pet. Carola's desire for quality bonding time leads her to seek out Lamalian, who is out hunting. She unexpectedly comes across her boyfriend sipping the blood of a freshly hunted goat, leaving her more astonished than a squirrel at a dance party. Back in the village, Carola attempts to get close, but Lamalian maintains a distance, as if he were a child avoiding broccoli. In Lamalian's world, it seems that cuddles are a solitary endeavor. The following day, Carola uncovers more cultural nuances, such as the prohibition against women undressing in front of men during bath time. No sneak peeks allowed. Soon, an unexpected visitor, a customs officer, arrives in the village, revealing that foreigners cannot freely associate with the Maasai tribe without navigating bureaucratic hurdles. It's akin to, uh, you can't sit with us moment. To extend her stay, Kerala and Lamalian embark on an urban adventure, navigating a bureaucratic obstacle course. Once they arrive in the city, the couple finally enjoy some quality time together, and their love flourishes stronger than a superhero in a spinach field. However, in a surprising turn of events, as Lamalian heads to the store for snacks, Carola collapses outside. Lamalian soon realizes that Carola has contracted malaria and takes swift action to get her the necessary treatment. Once Carola recovers, she decides to purchase a truck, and together they drive back to the village. They decide to take Lamalian's family on a trip in the truck, but things take a sour turn when Lamalian's mother scolds him for allowing a woman to drive. She believes that a man should always be in charge. Lamalian reluctantly takes the wheel but ends up crashing the truck. Carola becomes furious and scolds him, causing him to leave. Recognizing that she overreacted, Carola quickly searches for Lamalian and offers her apologies. They all return to the village together. However, as days go by, Carola's visa expires again. Lamalian proposes to her, and she agrees but she explains that she must return to Switzerland, her home country, to bid farewell to her family and settle some personal matters. Lamalian reluctantly lets her go, with Carola promising to return. In Switzerland, Carola's announcement of marrying a tribesman upsets her family, and they try to warn her against what they see as a major mistake. Nevertheless, she remains steadfast in her decision. The following day, she closes down her clothing business and returns to Kenya to marry Lamalian. On their wedding day, Carola dons a traditional white wedding dress, while Lamalian wears his warrior attire, and they finally become husband and wife. The next morning, Carola is shocked to witness the village women performing a circumcision ritual on a young girl. She calls Lamalian over, hoping to intervene, but he explains that it's a cultural tradition marking a girl's transition to womanhood. Disgusted by the practice, 
Carola leaves upset. Things take a turn for the worse when Carola, now pregnant, decides to open a shop to sell food and drinks. Lamalian strongly opposes the idea because, in the village, women are expected to focus on household duties. This disagreement leads to a heated argument. However, the situation escalates when a villager finds Carola and brings her to a collapsed pregnant woman. Carola desperately seeks help from the villagers, but they refuse, believing the pregnant woman has been cursed. Carola loads the woman into her truck and rushes to the city, but tragically, the truck breaks down and the unborn child does not survive. Carola is left devastated and traumatized, struggling to adapt to her new life. After some time, she finally opens her shop, drawing on her business experience. Through her determination and hard work, her business thrives. Lamalian's bitterness simmers as his wife's success continues to flourish. He no longer feels like the primary provider for the family. On top of that, he becomes envious of other men who frequent Carola's shop, believing her friendliness towards them disrespects him. One day, Lamalian decides it's time to confront Carola, firmly convinced she's cheating on him. Despite Carola's attempts to reassure him, he dismisses her explanations and angrily storms out. Their relationship takes a sharp downturn when Carola discovers Lamalian has been generously doling out free food and drinks to his friends. She reminds him that the shop is a business, not a charity, leading to yet another heated argument that ends with Lamalian storming off once again. Then, on a pivotal night, Carola goes into labor, and they rush her to the nearest city hospital. Thankfully, she successfully gives birth to a healthy baby, and the couple joyously celebrates upon returning to the village. However, Carola's happiness takes a hit when she realizes her shop has been depleted due to Lamalian's excessive generosity. In the following days, she takes a firm stance with Lamalian's friends, putting an end to the freebies. Despite Lamalian's attempts to intervene, Carola remains resolute. As months pass, Lamalian gradually begins to feel that he's no longer the head of the household, overshadowed by Carola's flourishing business. One night, he loses his temper and insults Carola insinuating she's involved in questionable activities with her male customers. Their argument escalates, but thankfully, other villagers step in to prevent Lamalian from taking things to a dangerous level. The next morning, still frustrated, Lamalian takes an unconventional step by giving himself a makeover, chopping off his hair and trying out modern clothing. Approaching Kerala, he questions whether she respects him more now mistakenly assuming her smiles towards other men were an issue. When another man enters, Lamalian's jealousy rekindles. Fortunately, Carola manages to defuse the situation, and Lamalian exits in frustration. Back in the village, Carola expresses her desire to take their daughter to Switzerland to introduce her to the family. Surprisingly, Lamalian agrees. However, as she prepares to leave, Lamalian's suspicions resurface when Carola asks him to sign a form at the immigration center. He can't read, so he asks his wife about the letter. She tells him it's okay and he signs it. Then, he asks Carola to promise she'll come back, and she says she will. But when Carola gets on the bus, Lamalian quietly says he knows she won't come back. Carola doesn't reply and leaves. The movie ends with Carola crying as she leaves her life with Lamalian forever. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe Mango Recap for more video like this and help the channel grow.